So I want to talk about the National Republican Senatorial Committee, the NRSC. So this campaign is currently under a little bit of scrutiny by Republicans because they feel as if the money that they've raised hasn't been going to Republican candidates in crucial GOP Senate races. And you can kind of see that because currently there's a lot of GOP candidates who are hurting. Herschel Walker, Dr. Oz, J.D. Vance. Um, although that's a little bit more closer to my understanding. But regardless, you know, these candidates are bad, but also there's an issue with regard to the money and where it's going. And some Republicans feel as if they've been left high and dry by this organization. So the Washington Post reports Republican Senate hopefuls are getting crushed on airwaves across the country while their national campaign fund is pulling ads and running low on cash, leading some campaign advisors to ask where all the money went and to demand an audit of the committee's finances according to Republican strategists involved in the discussions. In a highly unusual move, the National Republican Senatorial Committee this week canceled bookings worth about $10 million, including in the critical states of Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Arizona. A spokesman said the NRSC is not abandoning those races, but prioritizing ad spots that are shared with campaigns and benefit from discounted rates. Still, the cancellations forfeit cheaper prices that came from booking early and better budgeting could have covered both. The NRSC RSC's retreat came after months of touting record fundraising, topping $173 million so far this election cycle, according to Federal Election Commission disclosures. But the committee has burned through nearly all of it, with the NRSC's cash on hand dwindling to $28.4 million by the end of June. Other spending decisions, such as putting about $1 million total into Reliably Blue Colorado and Washington earlier this month, sparked fresh questions after the committee turned around and canceled buys in core battlegrounds. So this is really interesting to me. So the decisions that they're making are being questioned by Republican strategists because they don't understand it. And really nobody who's politically savvy understands this. So you have candidates in battleground states saying, hey, we're really getting crushed here. We need more money for television spots. And then all this money that they had, all of a sudden it's dwindled down to what was it 26 million and then they're spending money in deep blue states where they have no chance of winning i mean i don't think that you should just if you're running a campaign ignore these blue states but really i mean when it comes to washington you have no chance so you're not going to win a senate race in washington in 2022 so that money is better spent elsewhere on battleground states but it's like they're not doing that, and they're fucking pissed. So I'm not going to cut away, but I want to read one quote by a GOP operative because what he says, or this is a consultant, excuse me, but what he says here is hilarious. So he says, if they were a corporation, the CEO would be fired and investigated. Wow. So he's tacitly calling for action here, but then he does actually make a recommendation. Um, the way this money has been burned, there needs to be an audit or investigation because we're not going to take the Senate now, and this money has been squ squandered. It's a ripoff. So he's not going so far as to say that leadership at the NRSC should go, but I mean, certainly there needs to be an audit or an investigation. And I don't think he's wrong to call for this. So the question is, who's in charge? Well, the chair of the NRSC is none other than Senator Rick Scott. And they don't think that he's just incompetent. They think that he's literally using the NRSC to promote himself in hopes of possibly boosting his profile and name recognition in a potential future presidential run. And their speculation here isn't necessarily absurd considering that he's cut ads for the NRSC featuring himself when you should be featuring candidates. I mean, if you're the chair of the NRSC, you need to put the candidates front and center, especially ones in battleground states. Any strategist will tell you this, or anyone with common sense would tell you this, but he's cutting ads with himself. Now, to be fair, it's not like he's only cutting ads with himself, but he features himself, you know, to a bizarre extent when you're not the star of the show here. The candidates need to be put front and center. And it's funny that they made him the chair of the NRSC when this individual oversaw one of the largest Medicare scams in the history of the United States when he was the CEO of a healthcare company. But now they're like, let's put him in charge of the Senate uh, campaign's finances. That'll be a good idea. 
I, I love this. I, I mean, it's a dumb decision by them, but I'm absolutely satisfied with Rick Scott being in this position. So in a 2018 article for the South Florida Sun Sentinel, they explain Columbia slash HCA, Scott's company at the time, gave kickbacks to doctors so they would refer patients. Columbia slash HCA made patients look sicker than they were so Medicare would pay more. Columbia slash HCA kept two sets of books. The settlement required Columbia slash HCA to pay $1.7 billion in fines, then the largest healthcare fraud case in the country. When the federal investigation of Rick Scott's former hospital company became public in 1997, the board of Columbia and HCA forced him out. Scott left with $300 million in stock, a $5.1 million severance, and a $950,000 per year consulting contract for five years. So he oversaw at the time the largest Medicare scam in history, and he makes out like a bandit. The company admitted to 14 felonies related to fraud and business practices. Scott himself pled the fifth 75 times during his depositions. And now the GOP is like, you know what? You're going to be the chair of our Senate campaign arm. You're going to be the one that decides what we do with this money, where we put it, how we spend it. And they thought this was a good idea. I mean, as Gary Legum put it, Rick Scott oversaw the biggest Medicare fraud in history. So the GOP and its genius put him in charge of its national campaign fund and is now wondering where all its money went. Incredible. Absolutely. It's perfect. And I have to add, I'd be remiss to not include his bizarre agenda. I think it was like the Save America plan. I'm not necessarily sure what he called it, but he created this like 10 point plan or eight point plan of policies in his view that would help the country or save the country, however he framed it. But part of this included raising taxes on working Americans, cutting social security. It was just disastrous to the point where the GOP ran away from it and Democrats made it into like a laughing Scott. They said, oh, you know, the NRSC, this is the national Rick Scott committee. Because he was trying to, or he didn't like explicitly try to make this the NRSC's priorities, but like since he's the chair, obvi obviously there's that connection there. He's associated with it. So like the implication was that, oh, well, is this what the Senate is running on? Like increasing our taxes as, we're, as working Americans and cutting Social Security? Because I don't support that, which is why the GOP had to run away from it. So now the money has been squandered. They raised $173 million and that's down to... 26 million give or take and they're wondering what the fuck happened because now we're losing these races we don't have that much money you spent all the money and now there's months left and candidates in crucial battleground states are wondering what the fuck is going on and you put money into deep blue states where you're not going to win what's happening here what's happening and that's a valid question it's a very valid question now, they list out where the money was spent in the article to an extent, but it's not necessarily clear that there's answers for everything. For example, so the committee disclosed spending $23 million on ads with more than $21 million going into text messages and more than $12 million to American Express credit card payments, whose ultimate purpose isn't clear from the filings. According to the Washington Post, the committee also spent at least $13 million on consultants, $9 million on debt payments, and more than $7.9 million renting mailing lists, campaign finance data show. So you're spending $12 million on American Express credit card payments. You're putting um, all this money into texting and renting mailing lists when the Republican Party should have enough mailing lists itself. The NRSC should have mailing lists sufficient to raise money. But here we are. So I love this story so much. This story is a feel-good story. It puts a smile on my face. I love that he's squandering their money. And I love that now they are possibly regretting putting him in this position of power when this individual has proven that he is a fraud, quite literally. The individual who oversaw the largest Medicare scam in history shouldn't be in a position of power where he's overseeing the finances of an organization that is crucial to the GOP success, but I'm glad he's there and I'm glad that they're pissed. Keep it up, Rick Scott. Keep fucking up. Keep squandering their money because this is good, not just for the Democratic Party, but good for America. When Republicans do bad, America does better. Now, that's not to say that Democrats are good per se, but when we're dealing with fascists like Rick Scott and other Republicans, anything that they can do to shoot themselves in the foot, 
I will support that. So this is a great story, and I hope that he doesn't step down. I hope that he's not fired. I hope that he continues to make them mad. Love it. I'm going to come. Do not come. 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 Welcome to the Come Zone. Come. 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 Come.